You're listening to the Naked Bible Podcast. To support this podcast, visit nakedbiblepodcast.com and click on the support link in the upper right-hand corner. If you're new to the podcast and Dr. Hyde's approach to the Bible, click on New Start Here at nakedbiblepodcast.com. Welcome to the Naked Bible Podcast, episode 192, SBL, Conference Interviews, Part 3. I'm the layman, Trey Strickland, and he's the scholar, Dr. Michael Heiser. Hey, Mike, last day, SBL. Last day. Is, I see a tear forming in your eye. I've got my bags <laughs> packed. I'm leaving on a jet plane. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I'm going to be here for a while because my, uh, my wife and kids are coming in. And we're going to do some Boston things and then go drive down to PA for Thanksgiving. So, you know, have a good trip. I'm going to be here for a while. <laughs> Still doing the hotel thing. Well, in uh, in this episode, we we're going to talk to uh, Tim Mackey of the Bible Project. Uh, again, some listeners will have heard of that, but it's really a a wonderful content oriented, but again, you know, a, a visual presentation of of scriptural truth, biblical theology. So we we wanted to talk to Tim a little bit. We have a bit of a history between us there, so we were grateful to get some of his time. We talked with Matthew Lynch, uh, who's in the UK and has a, a fascinating model of delivering, a, again, high quality education for students that's uh, sustainable and sensible. I think you're going to be really interested, uh, if, if you live over there, uh, what, what they're actually doing and it's growing, it's taking hold. So for those of you who uh, have wanted to uh, you know, learn some, some scripture, good content, and you're in the UK, this is something you should check out. So another great set of interviews. Well, we're back at SBL, and we have with us Tim Mackey, Dr. Tim Mackey, a a fellow traveler uh, in the University of Wisconsin and Madison Hebrew Department. But more significantly uh, is that Tim has just a wonderful ministry, the uh, the Bible Project, and teaches part-time. But I'm going to let him introduce himself and tell us about what you do. Yeah. Um, Thank you. I'm Tim Mackey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I live in Portland, Oregon, and uh, yeah, I'm a, a professor of biblical literature at Western Seminary, a part-time, but my main gig, yeah, is the Bible Project, which is a non-profit animation studio in Portland that makes short animated films about biblical theology. And, and does it really well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a great team. So our main thing, we're, we're an educational YouTube channel. That's yeah. where we fit in the ecosystem of YouTube in the nonprofit education channel world. But um, we also have a website where we have lots of other biblical theology resources. And, yeah, well, the listeners will know, I mean, right away, this is sort of the sweet spot for mm-hmm. us because what we're trying to do is get content, good content, not like Christian Middle Earth crazy content. Yeah, right. Uh, to anybody who cares, you know, just the non-specialist, the pastor, and really anybody. Um that's the mission. Um, yeah. Again, just trying to do that. And, and what you do is just a perfect example of mm. what we would like to see done just generally. I mean, mm-hmm. stuff that needs to happen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we, I'm sure you like, you're like me, you meet people all the time that they've been Christians for 10, 20, 30 years yeah. and they, they just don't know a whole lot. And it's, it's not because they're not yes. smart or good thinkers. Mm-hmm. It's just, they, they're underexposed to yes. content. Yeah. And I, uh, at least my growing conviction is that it, it, it is about content, but it's also about a whole cultural paradigm mm-hmm. for engaging the Bible. Yep, there you go with video, um, yep. And it's not, it's not just like Western Protestantism, as if that's the problem with everything, mm-hmm. but it, it's more that there's the symptomatic issues in Protestant culture, especially mm-hmm. where people engage the Bible only in environments where you encounter little bits of the Bible out mm-hmm. of context <laughs> for your whole life. And so it's You're actually very difficult in that yeah. kind of culture to see the Bible, how it's actually designed to be read on its own terms, which is as an um, expansive, unified, yeah. epic narrative. Okay, I, I have to <laughs> It's ask very you. difficult. So, so that's a part of what you and I both have in common of helping yeah. people see always every particular poem or story or verse of Paul is located within that larger All right. It, when, I'm sure you encounter people that say, mm-hmm. well, Tim, why should we care about all that external stuff? Why should we care about the big picture? You know, I, 
that just mm. sounds like work, you know. I, I mean, <laughs> it, can I just open my, you know, flip open my Bible and look at a few verses and understand it? I mean, yeah. why, why do I need to do all this? What do you, yeah? What do you, how do you try to encourage them or or, or even know, possibly rebuke them? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I I became a follower of Jesus when I was almost twenty, and I had not read the Bible at any length, and but I was really compelled by Jesus, just the person of Jesus. Mm-hmm. And so the Gospels were the first parts of the Bible I ever read. And I still remember this. There was so much about Jesus that was so compelling, how he treated people, what he said and did. But there was a whole layer that I was just like, what is this guy talking about most of the time? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like the narratives about yeah. how what he did with people, yeah. but how he, it, pretty much everything he was trying to communicate made no sense to me. Mm-hmm. And then someone taught me, that these cross references for when right. he's quote when why I read the NASB that's what the okay. first Bible put in my yeah. hands and they put the Old Testament quotes in all caps yeah and I remember asking my mentor like what's why are all this stuff in all caps and he's like oh those are quotations of Jesus from the first three quarters of the Bible <laughs> and so then I just right from the very beginning I just started working those notes and I was more bewildered than ever yeah and then I realized like I don't I want to follow Jesus and I want to understand him and his, who he is, is incomprehensible to me apart from Mm -hmm. the first three quarters of my Bible. So that's, that was my journey really, to be honest, was new Testament use of the old. And I just realized everything the apostles are trying to tell us about who Jesus is, what it means to follow him. They see it as part of a much larger story that takes a lifetime Mm -hmm. to yeah. To immerse yourself in. And for the for the apostles and Jewish readers of the Bible, that's the joy of the scriptures. That's how much work it takes. Psalm one nineteen. It's a joy. Yeah. You know? So, so it's a I don't know, it's a different culture. We have to it, learn how to It is, but that's see. that's a good that's a good tack. You know, that's a very um I try not to, to let uh you know, a person's sort of reticence about mm. work. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, deter me from actually giving them the right answer. You know, yeah, it, yeah, it is work, but yes, like most things in life, anything really worth yes your time, or it's going to be work. Yeah, that's like a relationship. Relationships take work, sure, but there's something about these these texts, these precious texts from the Jewish and Christian tradition. I don't. Yeah, I often feel now about the Bible, it's like having a friend who's eccentric and odd, (laughs) who everybody misunderstands, right? and you'd want to help the world see how awesome your friend is. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, you could call it work, I just call it time, Yeah, and stepping, being able to step out of my way of seeing the world into this epic storyline, which is a from a different culture and time and place yeah. and it reveals God to us, but it's from another, yeah, it's no, from I, another world, so to speak. That's a good and analogy. So that you have I to like humble that. yourself and get yeah. on a plane and go fly to another culture, bring your phrase book, right. <laughs> learn like how to <laughs> right. say your numbers and hello and goodbye. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like yeah, traveling. Absolutely. So yeah. it does take work, but it's, that's, but it's an, it's an investment. Ultimately. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, there you go. It's a yeah. I I I agree. I I love what you guys are doing through all the naked Bible resources and um, uh, it's it's my easiest place to go to for exegetical stimulation. <laughs> <laughs> While I'm riding my bike to work, right. like I want to session Leviticus ten this morning on my ride to work, <laughs> so I know where I'm going. Okay, <laughs> episode thirty seven or yeah. whatever. Anyway, so well, thank you guys for what you're doing. Yeah, well, we're we're excited about what what you do too, and it's just we admire the uh, again the effort and the results, you know, that that go into it. So we would encourage everybody, you know, who listens to us to check out the Bible Project. You want to give the, the URL? Yeah, again? Yeah, you know, the easiest thing to do is just Google the Bible Project. Okay. Um, or if you're ever in YouTube, um, just search the Bible Project, and uh, the videos will will come up pretty quickly mm-hmm. and um and you should our know, main website is uh, just the bibleproject.com you should know that there's a lot of scholarship there's a lot of uh, uh, grunt work that goes into these videos uh, again tim you know has a, uh, an earned phd you know he he knows what he's doing and you know we've chatted uh off the podcast about the work that he does so you you can trust that 
what you're getting in the videos. It's it's not just, you know, mm -hmm. eye candy, okay? It it's good stuff. It's good thinking distilled mm. uh in a very comprehensible way. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, my I cut my teeth uh in those early years teaching the Bible to uh junior high skateboarders. I came to Christ yeah. through outreach ministry to skateboarders in Portland. <laughs> and so my first teaching responsibility was for the junior high Bible study, uh -huh. kids that have become Christians. And so uh, that's when I first started drawing. I would draw stuff on charts for them to just try and sure. make it comprehensible. And, uh, and I had some teachers who drew a lot. And then uh, for me, it was the genesis of using heavy uh, reliance on visuals yeah. to communicate how the Bible works. And then when I met my friend John, my co-founder of the Bible Project, he had been professionally making short animated explainer videos uh -huh. for clients, mostly tech companies. And so he pitched the idea to me to marry my bad drawings <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully good content with his skill set and right. team. And then the bio project happened. So it's, wow. it's super, super fun. I get to be a nerd and read uh, and study and yeah. write. And then the art team takes yeah. over after so, that. Somebody else can make it beautiful. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for spending a few minutes with us. Yeah, cheers. Thank you. Well, we're back at SPL and we're with Matthew Lynch. I'm going to let Matthew introduce himself and give us a little bit of a history of, you know, who you are, what your d degree is in, what your focus is, but more importantly, what it is you do. Sure. Thanks, Mike. Thanks sure. for having me on the podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, I'm, my name's Matt Lynch. I am Dean of Studies and Lecturer in Old Testament at Westminster Theological Center, which is based in, in the UK. I did my doctoral studies in Hebrew Bible at Emory University in Atlanta. Um, I had done my master's degrees at Regent College in Vancouver, and I um, ended up moving over to the UK uh, four or five years ago. And uh, so I work at Westminster Theological Center now, and the WTC is is a is a unique college. Uh, first of all, we're unabashedly charismatic mm -hmm. and um, interdenominational, and we're not an ordination track college. So a lot mm -hmm. of colleges are specifically for people going into the Church of England or something right. like that. But we're um, looking to equip the whole people of God, no matter what area of of ministry or work they're going mm -hmm. into. Um, the way our model works is that students study with us part time and in a local hub, mm -hmm. which is a, a, a place where they gather um, with a with a cohort of other students in a, a local community. And I can explain how that works. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How, how, yeah. Tell us how it works <laughs> um, and how many there are. If you can if you have those sure. numbers off the top of your head, let us yeah, know. Yeah, I do. And, okay. and it's it's growing. We're a growing college. Um, and. We have uh, 11 locations around the UK, and we have a hub in, in Stockholm as well. Wow. Um, and we just opened a hub in Northern Ireland this year. Uh, so that's, those are the um, kind of farthest reaches of our hubs. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, and the way, if someone was going to study at, uh, with us, they, could, they would pick a particular hub uh, around the UK or um, up in, uh, in Stockholm, and uh, they would enroll and... Uh, the way they would do their course is that let's say they're doing a certificate in, in theology mm -hmm. or they're doing um, a, a graduate diploma or a bachelor's degree. Uh, essentially, you enroll at the local hub, let's say Northeast London or in Manchester or down in uh, Bristol or, uh, you know, out in East Anglia or um, you, we have hubs all over the place. And, and you would uh, study part time in the local hub about mm -hmm. 20 nights a year. Okay. Uh, on Monday or Tuesday evening, but then you have two uh, annual residentials where all of us, all of our students, gather together. There are about uh, 200 of us uh, okay. at, at the college. We gather in Telford, which is a pretty central location, and 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 those are, are really fantastic time. And and our our vision and mission really is to to integrate uh, an openness to the spirit uh, and deep academic study mm -hmm. and not divorcing those two things. Right. And that's important, you know, for, for my mm -hmm. audience, because there'll be some in the audience that they hear the term charismatic and yeah. they think that's going to be incompatible, right. you know, with, with scholarship. So one of the reasons I wanted to have Matthew on is that that's not mm -hmm. the case here. Okay. No. We have a, a credentialed scholar, uh, mm -hmm. stays up, you know, with his, his own, you know, interests, you know, 
tries to do uh, you know serious academic work and transmit mm. you know a, a sense of the need to do that uh, mm. in his in his school but yet you know not ignoring you know the other side yeah exactly and I, and I think we we find that uh, among a lot of our students there's a real hunger to go deep mm -hmm. um, to to put those sure foundations um, on top of an experience they've had because mm -hmm. uh, an experience is important. Um, we believe God is living and active uh, and wants to actually meet with us. Uh, but at the same time, you can't build your life simply on experience. Right, and right. You need, um, you need foundations to, to sustain you mm -hmm. uh, when things, when you don't have the experience yeah. um, or when you're doubting the experience. And uh, so I, th so I think the integration of those two things is, is really important. Yeah. Well, we've, you know, we, we've, I, I, we could probably all give a grocery list of the the bad examples we've seen where everything is experience oriented. Uh, I, I'm really I want to go back to the hubs. You know how how does a hub form and operate? Like, do you have to have a a, a graduate or a scholar or a pastor? I mean, who who leads the thing? Like, what? How does that work? Yeah. So each hub has a hub director, okay, uh, who is a is a facilitator of the hub, um, oversees um, the, the kind of marketing side of things, and, and is a kind of pastoral support there. Okay. They're not meant to be academic support. Uh, we handle that centrally uh, mm -hmm. as a as a college. Do you do and, that like over the internet or yeah, like Skype so, or how do you how do you do that? Both ends. So okay. so first of all, if a student studies with us. You, you don't have a distance learning relationship with the with a lecture because you've already met them at the residential. We start the year in okay. September at the at the residential together okay. at, with a time of of intensive study and worship. Um, so that's the, mm -hmm. the the context out of which you you form the community. Right. Uh, but then a local hub's ba usually based in a church that we have a relationship with, and a student will come to a hub on a hub evening. One of those twenty evenings a year, right. if they're doing the certificate or grad diploma or BA, and um, they would watch pre-recorded content. They would have a time of worship and discussion together, but also a video conference with the lecturer, oh, okay, uh, who will help them unpack and ask questions about what they've seen in the content. Okay, so it's a some refer to it as a flipped classroom model yeah. where you get the you get the content in yep, the yep. in the recorded section and then yep. discuss it. So if you're an instructor, you're you're doing yeah. twenty of these. Would yep. you, you said a a term. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, each or, individual instructor doesn't have that kind of load, but it's, oh, okay. uh, the the students will have different instructors. Okay. Uh, for twenty evenings. That's that's really interesting. Yeah. You know, how now were, are there fewer or more obstacles to creating a degree granting program in the UK? Like, do you have accreditation issues? Is yeah. that separate from granting degrees? I mean, how, yeah. what were the, what was the dog and pony show you yeah, know, yeah. that you had to, to go through to do right. this? Yeah. So to get a uh, degree granting status in the UK, you need to be affiliated with a university. So okay. all of our students are awarded a degree from the University of Chester, okay. which is our validating university or accrediting okay. university um so so yeah it's a it's a fully fledged academic degree but um we have relative autonomy to develop a program how we want mm -hmm. and that's where we can do what we do and so we have a really good relationship with chester uh but yeah there's a lot of red tape and paperwork right. that's, did you that's have friends there or how did how did you why, uh, why so did... so the the relationship with Chester preceded me uh, okay. the formation of that um they have a really good theology and religious studies program there mm -hmm. uh, that we connected with um we and got to know the the folks in that department i'm not sure the the precise the reason all the reasons for the decision to go right. with Chester we had been with a different university before mm -hmm. um but but I, th I think Chester also has a has an openness to um uh, a, a confessional, confessional uh, theological colleges okay. um, operating in their orbit, and, yeah. and I'm not sure all universities are. Okay, uh, that's probably probably an understatement. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so there's, in the U, in the UK, unlike in the US, where you'd have a, an accrediting body like the ATS, right? Uh, there, it's all run through the universities. You don't have kind of freewheeling operations in quite the same way. Mm -hmm. I'd like to get your impressions uh, on sort of the state of believing Christianity in the UK, because I, I tend to hear the, the laments. Yeah. Okay. So what, sure. what well, are your yeah. thoughts? Well, I'm, as you can tell from my accent, I'm, I'm American. So right. I, I, I hesitate <laughs> to make too many broad pronouncements about the state of faith in the UK. Sure. Uh, but, but I can say that 
Well, I'll, I'll take it from our angle. What's exciting to us is that the, the, the charismatic Pentecostal churches are growing in the UK um, across sure. denominations. And so, so for us, that bodes well for our college, but also it, it signals something exciting is happening there. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I think the, one of the reasons the church, those wings of the church are growing is because there's been uh, an, an infusion of immigrants into those denominations. Um, and so, you know, some people suggest that in some ways revival will happen in the UK, um, th- not internal yeah, to like from the outside. To, yeah, from the outside, yeah. so to speak. Uh, the the Anglican Church, uh, which is the state church in in, in the UK, uh, is is broadly in, in decline. Although in the London area, it's it's growing, okay. and so that's the wow. only major sector of the UK yeah. where where the Anglican Church is growing. Probably to to do with uh, Holy Trinity Brompton, mm-hmm. which is the major church and influencer yeah. there. I mean, I, I keep hearing hearing and reading things about like you know some ridiculous percentage of people in the UK are are Jedi, you know, like <laughs> like they identify with this weird sort oh, of oh, neo okay, yeah neo. Yeah. Oh, you mean literally Je- Jedi? Yeah, yes. yeah, like the Jedi. Yeah, we see them walking something. around all over the place. Yeah, they're they're. <laughs> Uh, one out of every two Brits right. are, are Jedi. That's right. true. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, it's. Yeah. I mean, you've, I'm sure you've seen these stories about yeah. you know these percentages of people who identified yeah. as Jedi yeah. on a religious, yeah. and and I'm sure yeah. s- a lot of it has to be like yeah. sort of a. You'd think it would be a little bit of a prank, yeah. You know, at some point, well, it, it's. It, but, I mean, I, I, a related story. A friend of mine uh, is. Uh, he was teaching him one of the massive open online courses, and and he made an offhand comment. Uh, when he was talking about ancient Greek gods, that no one worships them anymore. And then he went on to make some other point. Right. Well, of course, a listener wrote in <laughs> and said, um, I, I do, in fact, worship um, a, the sure. ancient Greek pantheon. And I, it's I take pro- offense It's probably that, the so. guy that interviewed me last year. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was on a pagan podcast. Yeah, that, I guess that's his thing. I know? guess you bump into to these folks a little, yeah. a little more often than I do. But yeah. Uh, yeah. It, uh, but, uh, you know, to get back to the point about um, the state of the church in the UK, the, the the other, I guess, major issues, rural decline, mm-hmm. uh, the rural decline of the church. Uh, and that's been a, a question that people have been banging their heads against a wall over for, yeah. for quite some time, what to do about that. Wow. Well, that, that's really an interesting program. And you've got, yeah. again, collectively 200, yeah. which is a good number. Yeah. I mean, it, that, it, oh, it's, it's, it's that it's would a, be a, that'd be a sort of a, a good thriving seminary yeah. community, you know, over yeah. here. You know, yeah. minus the the ones that have been here forever, but that, I mean yeah. that's that's a really good number. Yeah, and I mean we we were at uh, about 135 in 2014. We've been growing steadily okay. each year, so it's wow. um, partly to do with adding new hubs, um, mm-hmm. but also I think I think we're tapping into a, a kind of hunger for depth, sure. and people find it a very exciting environment that also fits around their work and life. Um, the, very few people can can take off from their work and go to a full-time brick and, right. brick and mortar seminary. Right. Um, and, and so I think it's a, it's a really, it's a really good model and allows us as well to tap into some of the best lectures around mm-hmm. to do this. Yeah. Do you, uh, what, how, how about resources? I mean, how yeah. do you get your students to resources? Does that, is that a factor in mm. where a hub is that they're near a, a yeah. good library or something? Yeah. And, and we try to, to mitigate the, the disparity that you would have if you're in London and you would have right, access to all right. kinds of great libraries. Whereas if you're out in East Sussex, which is where we have another hub, um, you have slim pickings out there. Sure. And what we do is we, we furnish a, a small library at each hub, which mm-hmm. has all the core books for the, for the modules. Mm-hmm. We call them modules here in right. the UK, the courses. Sure. And, uh, and, but they also have access to a huge database online, and then uh, through uh, EBSCO, they have about seven thousand ebooks mm-hmm. in in biblical studies and theology. So that that's that gives them uh, a, a pretty does a, does Chester much like access. A, does Chester give you access to that, like with student yeah. identification and all that? Yeah, they give us uh, access to their databases. That's really nice. Yeah, we we bought the um the the library though the e library to okay. to help support students okay. um, because. You know, I think if you have a small hub of only a thousand books or library of only a thousand right. books, you just can't do research and right. substantial study. So, so that, that's been really helpful. Yeah. Well, that's really interesting. So we, we get 
we get good spiritual news from the UK. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I think so. We just, like I said, I, I just keep getting laments, you know, yeah. in, in email and whatnot. But I, uh, I wanted to have you on because we have a lot of listeners yeah. uh, that are going to be in that area. And, you know, there you go. You can be part of a community, uh, yeah. you know, learn something of, of, of quality. Mm. Um, take advantage of it. So yeah. there, there it is. Yeah. Should I share the website? Yep. Share the website again. WTCtheology.org.uk. Uh, and you can always uh, go on there and email me, Matt mm-hmm. Lynch, if you have questions about anything. Uh, and be, I'd be really happy to speak with you. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Okay, Mike, that was good. Another year down, 2017. Right. Looking forward to 2018, which is in Denver, I believe. Right. Denver. Next Are year. Are you going to say so in Rocky Denver with, with everything? No, I've been in Denver several okay. times. So. Right. so it was just the Rhode Island thing. It was just the Rhode Island, okay. yes. <laughs> the New England area is like another, is like the UK for me. Okay, well, so maybe, maybe they'll do it in Alaska. Hence somewhere. the reason why they call it New right. England. Because <laughs> we were in New Jersey and I asked you, uh, yeah, where, where's, 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 where's the old Jersey? <laughs> Nobody knew. So (laughs) there you go. All right, Mike. Well, I've enjoyed it. We appreciate everybody that came on. And uh, we'll pick up Hebrews 8 next weekend. So uh, with that, I just want to thank everybody for listening to the Naked Bible Podcast. God bless. Thanks for listening to the Naked Bible Podcast. To support this podcast, visit www.nakedbibleblog.com. To learn more about Dr. Heiser's other websites and blogs, go to www.drmsh.com.